morning, everyone. It is Saturday. It's raining outside. And I'm going to show you a day in the life of a weekend while training for an ultra. First things first, I started with two scoops of G1M Sport, which is 40 grams of carbs and 700 milligrams of sodium total in two scoops. I have a 15 mile loop. I will have two gels. One is this Spring Energy Awesome Sauce, which is 180 calories. And one is the Spring Energy Canterbury, which is 100 calories. Six miles down, which means gel number one. Going for the awesome sauce. I'm doing one gel every six miles. So I'm gonna slam this. Ooh, that's good. Awesome sauce, it's like a apple cinnamon. About to hit mile 12. Have another gel right here. I'm doing a split today between road and trails. So spending just some time on some easy trails. It's pretty slick because it's been raining, but I would much rather be on trails than a road. Run complete, 15 miles, two hours, one minute, 56 seconds at an 808 .08 minute per mile pace. So that wraps up a down week of training. Volume was decreased, mileage was decreased this week. You know, last weekend it was a 30 mile run and then next weekend we'll actually be in Michigan for, for Christmas, because that's where Steph is from, that's where her family lives. So I'll do my long runs in Michigan. Hopefully there's some snow, hopefully it's very cold. It's gonna be awesome. I love you like la 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 la. Oh. Post run protein waffles. Super simple recipe. One serving of Kodiak cakes. One and a half scoops of cinnamon roll whey protein, one egg, one smashed up banana, a little bit of vanilla extract, about one tablespoon of Swerve, it's a brown sugar replacement, some milk, and I just made some waffles, topped it with some Kerrygold pure Irish butter and some sugar-free syrup, and they look amazing. If you have been following this channel for a second now, you know our favorite wing spot, which is in Central Texas, is 600 degrees and they have a dry rubbed ranch wing. We're gonna try to recreate that tonight on the Big Green Egg. We'll see how it goes. So something that I've done for the first time this year, during the holiday season, I saw a lot of people do it last year, so I jumped in on the fun, is make a little gratitude thank you snack bin for our delivery drivers that are extremely overworked due to my um, Amazoning. Excessive and Amazoning. <laughs> I don't go to stores, but I put them to work all year round. We have a lot of steps they have to go up and cart up, so I just feel bad. But let me tell you, this is my, what, fourth time refilling this. They write on the packages, thank you. They talk to the doorbell camera. It is truly the most jolly thing ever. And I just go to the stack aisle in HEB and just load up and it's always like empty at the end of the week. Well, tell them what the number one thing that's been taken so far. 
The BPM Field Bars. The Field Bars. There's Kind Bars, there's Cliff Bars, and they always are the last to go. The BPM Field Bars were the first to go, which was cool. So, got some Gatorade, Red Bulls, some hand sanitizer, Kleenex, gum, just fun snacky things. The Gatorades always go really quick too, because these guys are overworked and they need a little treat. <laughs> So this arrived this past week, and this is a large, big green egg, which is just another way that we are gonna be able to cook meats out on the patio. Right now, we primarily use the Traeger, and love the Traeger, but I also have been seeing these for years, and I've been meaning to pick one up to complement the Traeger as well. Now, I'm very curious about this because the Traeger is electronic. You plug it in, you set the dial to your temperature, you let it preheat, and it's not direct heat on the food that's on the, the grill, but with the big green egg, it is lighting the charcoal, and the way you control the temperature is by letting in more or less air. So I'm sure there's a learning curve, but it's more direct heat from what I understand. I wanna briefly interrupt this video to let you know, it is sponsored by Helix, which is the mattress that's on this bed right here. Now, Helix makes premium mattresses and bedding that are fit to meet your specific needs and ship directly to your door conveniently for free. Me and the pups, here comes Ryder too. Here's Ryder. We, <laughs> we have been sleeping on a Helix mattress for over a year now. And we love it. We love it so much that we have a Helix mattress on every bed in this house. The dogs, they sleep in the bed with us and they love it. Now everybody's different and has unique sleep preferences and Helix knows that. So they have a quiz on their website that asks you a series of questions like if you're sleeping alone, if you're sleeping with someone else in the bed, if you're a side sleeper, if you're a back sleeper, if you're a stomach sleeper, if you like a soft, firm or medium mattress, and me personally, after taking the quiz, I prefer the Midnight Lux. I'm a side sleeper, I sleep in bed with my wife, Steph, and I like a medium firm mattress. Now we have a king mattress in this room. We have a queen mattress in our spare bedroom. And believe it or not, when it comes to your door, it is rolled up in a box so you can easily transport it into your bedroom let it expand and then throw it on top of your bed. Now with Helix, you get a 100 night sleep trial. And after 100 nights, if you don't enjoy the mattress, you can return it for a full refund. Plus, there's a 10 year warranty. Now Steph and I love our Helix mattress. We love mattresses on our bed and our guests always love the Helix mattresses on their bed as well. And I think you guys will too. So if you're interested and you're looking for a new mattress, go to helixsleep.com slash Nick Bear to get $200 off. You can find the link in the description box below. Thanks for tuning in and Helix, thank you for sponsoring this video. So the big green egg is heating up. Here are our wings. These are the full wings. So here's the drumstick part and the flat. So I have, this is just for me and Steph, both of these, we love wings. This is what I seasoned them with a few hours ago as they were sitting in the fridge. Some of this ranch seasoning just a little bit, lots of parsley, garlic powder, dried chives, dill weed, onion, pepper, and salt. This thing's just cooking right now. It smells, mmm, that smells good. Right now we have it just on the ground because we're getting the Traeger and the green egg built in. So I have it at 400 right now. And the way you control the heat is by opening and closing the top and opening and closing the bottom. So the more open they are, the hotter it gets, the more closed you make them, you can decrease the temperature. This thing's just cooking.
So initial impressions and reaction from the wings on the green egg. The smoke and the flavor is on point. Uh, one thing I do need to work on to master is using the direct versus indirect heat. Originally, I wasn't using the indirect plate and I threw them on and they started getting pretty dark very fast. So then I added the indirect plate underneath the grill and then I was able to really control like cooking it. I'm impressed. So today was supposed to be an off day from running, but I was thinking last night, we have a big week of travel coming up. I might miss some mileage, so I'd rather bank some mileage when I can before we leave, and that's what I'm doing today. So I'm gonna do another 15 miles this morning. It's about 36 degrees. Here we go, another 15 miles. Sometimes in the first like quarter mile of a run, I can tell if it's gonna be a great one or a good one. And today, I can tell it's gonna be a great one. So this is a free run. I'm not concerned with pace or heart rate. I'm just running to run. I got my 15 mile loop. Some segments, I'll send it. Some I'll pull back, but just having fun with it. Now this is what you call a beautiful morning. It couldn't be any better for a morning run. 15 miles, one hour, 53 minutes, 20 seconds at a 7.33 minute per mile pace. Felt good to move the legs a little faster and just kind of lose sense of time, heart rate, effort, pace, everything, and just run. First thing is first post-run supplements every morning. One scoop of electrolytes to replenish. One serving of strong reds and one serving of strong greens. The strong morning supplement stack. And then I'm gonna wash down one serving strong multivitamin, one serving strong joints. Our new supplement launching next month, one serving of strong omega, which is our fish oil supplement. For anyone that is married, dear wives or husbands, get mad at you for using their shampoo. This is Steph's shampoo, Olaplex, but I love it. So, I use it every once in a while, but don't tell her. Now it's pretty rare on the weekends that Steph and I have no commitments, no events, no weddings, nowhere to be or really nothing that we have to do. So when we have weekends like this, we really embrace it. We hang out as much as possible together. We take the dogs for walks. Uh, we come into the gym and train. So we just showed up at BPN HQ. We're about to get a workout in. Um, Preston's here, Miguel is here. Part of the BPN team is already training. I'm doing a core and chest focused training session. 
uh, and gonna do some bench press. Probably working up to maybe 295 at the max and see how that feels. Um, but let's go hit some weights. I've shown this before, this is one of my, if not my favorite, chest finisher. You do 20 to 25 regular push-ups, and then as many reps as possible, diamond push-ups on a med ball or an elevated surface. Rest about 60 seconds in between each set, four to five sets total. So push-ups first, then med ball. So every year around the holidays, our cleaning crew, Eva and her team, drop us off homemade fresh tamales. And now Steph and I post-workout are crushing some tamales. This is a chicken <clears throat> tamale. Last year we had some beef. I'm sure there's some beef ones in there. Her and her family make like dozens for us. And they leave them here at the HQ for the team to eat. So Steph and I are crushing some posts. I'm post. sorry, I can't concentrate. They're so hot. I can't even breathe. They're so good, but they're so spicy. Oh. They are spicy? Holy. But they are. Delicious. Good. It's my first time trying. Steph's first tamale. I love it. I didn't have a tamale until Eva brought some last year. And man. Mmm. <sighs> The BPN truck is ready for the move tomorrow. So we are moving the marketing and media team tomorrow morning to their new offices in our expansion, which is the building behind this one. And then I'm moving back over to Suite 360. So the move is commencing tomorrow and Tuesday, this past week and this week, we are wrapping up end of year reviews with all the team members, all employees going over the past year's performance and setting expectations and goals going into 2022. Big changes this week, right before Christmas. Now Sunday afternoons and evenings typically look the same. It's meal prep for the week, catch up on emails over the last couple days leading into Monday because Monday's always really crazy. The warehouse crew is getting all the orders fulfilled from the weekend. We are prepping for right now Q1 of 2022, which is part of that big move and moving some people around and uh, new job titles and promotions and restructuring the, the organization of, of the business a little bit. But I wanna leave you with this. This past week, we uploaded a new podcast on the Bear Performance Podcast. It was with Jeff Cunningham, who was my marathon coach for my last marathon did, where it was sub three. He's also going to be my marathon coach after this ultra where I'm going after a sub 250 marathon at the Buffalo, New York marathon. I had Jeff on the podcast that released this past week 
and the title was the sub three hour marathon formula. And one of the things he said in that interview, which I'll share the clip as soon as I'm done talking to wrap up the video, was that it's better to be consistently good at something than occasionally great. You can apply that to everything in your life. If you're just kind of slacking off and underperforming consistently, but every so often you come out and you achieve greatness, that doesn't really take you to your, your goal. It doesn't progress over time. But if you show up consistently and execute and you're good at that, it is much better than being occasionally great. So I'll leave you with that. Thanks for tuning in to the video and we'll see you guys in the next one. One of the most important things I tell people is, is it's more important to be consistently good than occasionally great, right? And what I mean by that is, is you don't go out there and go, man, I crushed that workout. Well, yeah, you were laying on the ground for an hour after you were done and now you can't walk for two days later, right? That's occasionally great. Let's just be consistently good. Let's show up. Let's understand the parameters of the workout. Let's be passionate about investment in the process and sticking to the plan and be passionate about watching the fitness creep in almost insidiously. It's like plate tectonics. It just slowly creeps in and then suddenly you wake up on race day and it's like, wow, I put in some amazing training. I'm ready. That's the key.